On this channel, I've spoken a number of times on the fact that LFP or lithium iron phosphate batteries will replace lithium ternary batteries. Now the CEO of one of the biggest battery companies in the world has said when this will happen. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you here. I'm the Electric Viking. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. Great to see so many subscribers come on board over the last 10 and a half, 11 months since we started this channel. In that period of time, we've made more than 1,300 videos. Hope you've enjoyed the content. Thank you for coming with us on this journey. It's been really exciting. It's been exciting for me because I've learned so much by just simply researching all this information on a daily basis. You know, it's been a lot of fun to learn what is going on in the industry because when I started, truthfully, I had no idea. I thought I did. I'd read hundreds and hundreds, thousands of articles, but the truth is it wasn't until I started making this channel and I started really doing hours and hours of research every day that I started to realize what was really going on. That is that LFP batteries will, over the next few years, by and large, replace lithium ternary batteries. Why? Well, they are better in almost every conceivable way, except really one. Only one way, in my view, that ternary batteries are better. By the way, ternary batteries are the batteries that are used pretty much by all of Legacy Auto. What is Legacy Auto? Toyota, General Motors, Ford, Honda, Subaru, Renault, Volkswagen, Audi, BMW, Mercedes, all that. That's Legacy Auto. Non-legacy is what people would see as Tesla, Chinese EV manufacturers, Neo, Xpeng, Leap Motor, then Rivian in the US, Lucid, and all these other new manufacturers popping up. What's happened in China over the last 12 months is that there's been a huge shift away from lithium ternary batteries, which are obviously the NCM nickel-based batteries, mostly. Not all of them, mostly nickel. A lot of them have cobalt as well. Obviously, lithium iron phosphate batteries don't have any of that. They just have iron, phosphate, and lithium. Iron is one of the most abundant things on the face of the planet. Very, very cheap. Phosphate is not. But at the moment, as far as we can see, there's plenty of phosphate to go around. I know some of you will be concerned about the amount of phosphate in the world, but based on my research, that won't be an issue. So the one drawback for LFP batteries is the energy density. Energy density at the pack level for LFP batteries is quite a bit lower currently, now, today, than ternary batteries. So yes, there is a big advantage to using ternary batteries. Now, one big advantage, obviously everything else is a disadvantage. However, that will change by the end of this year as numerous battery companies in China have been able to significantly increase the energy density of LFP batteries. So when will they start to replace ternary batteries in the West? Well, I don't know exactly. But the CEO of Goshan High Tech has made the claim of when he thinks this will happen. Now, according to Goshan High Tech CEO, Li Zhen, Volkswagen's Chinese battery partner, Goshan, has achieved industrialization of the battery cell with LFP chemistry. They presented this at the beginning of 2021. They offered an energy density of 210 watts per kilo. And it's reported that Goshan High Tech has a contract with Tesla to supply 200 gigawatt hours of LFP batteries with this higher energy density. Goshan is working on a semi-solid state battery as well, which they say will have 360 watt per kilogram. Li actually confirmed during his appearance at the China EV100 forum in 2022. And he said that Goshan are going to bring LFP cells with an energy density of 230 watt per kilo to mass production by the end of this year. He's giving us a little hint as to when he thinks lithium ternary batteries will no longer be a viable product. Now, the electric.com says that the energy densities mentioned in the presentation of the cell with 210 watts per kilo are the energy density at cell level, not the gravimetric energy density at the ready to install pack level. Two different things, cell level and pack level, right? There is no confirmed statement from Goshan on the pack level. The portal inside EVs estimates at the time it could rise to about 180 watts per kilo at the pack level, which is still quite high. Now, for comparison, CATL's current LFP cells, which are installed in the Tesla Model 3, 
and the Model Y in Shanghai come to 125 watts per kilo at the pack level, but CATL itself presented its third generation of its cell to pack technology at the China EV100 forum as well, which is said to enable 160 watts per kilo at the pack level. So based on Tesla's 60 kilowatt hour pack, this represents a 28% improvement, enabling a 76 kilowatt hour pack size in a midsize Model 3 vehicle with LFP cells. Or in other words, Tesla's vehicles are likely by the end of this year with the LFP batteries to have 28% greater range or potentially more than that, which is pretty incredible. Goshon CEO is aware of the importance of this development and how this will change the entire battery industry worldwide, especially with regard to their new battery cells they're working on, which by the end of this year will reach 230 watts per kilo and be mass produced. In other words, they already have these batteries. They're just getting to the point of mass production and it's going to take them till the end of this year before they can mass produce them. Lee said lithium ternary batteries, in other words, NCM batteries, NCA batteries, so nickel, cobalt, manganese, nickel, cobalt, aluminium batteries, which are common in legacy auto electric cars and in some in China as well, will soon be replaced. And he believes that this will happen by the end of this year, once multiple different companies bring out their products with this higher energy density, bring out their LFP batteries with this higher energy density. He's basically saying by the end of this year, it's common knowledge now, CATL, right? BYD, Goshan High Tech, and asphalt will all have LFP battery chemistries with an energy density comparable at the pack level to lithium ternary batteries. If not very, very close, in some cases higher, in some cases a little bit lower, but there or thereabouts. In other words, this will happen very, very, very quickly. If you combine this with, it's sort of a perfect storm, which I've referred to before. If you combine this with the fact that, well, we're seeing all these recalls for ternary batteries, especially the ternary batteries coming from the world's largest supplier of that battery chemistry, which is LG Chem or LG Energy Solutions. I mean, look, we've just seen the news within the last 48 hours from the NHTSA in the US that they're recommending recalls for every single car with LG Chem's batteries in them. What, are that, what is that battery chemistry? Lithium ternary batteries, right? If all those batteries had have come with lithium ion phosphate batteries, this never would have happened. All these car manufacturers who are going to be involved in these massive recalls never would have had to do this. General Motors, what's just happened to them, right? Massive problems. They only sold 26, only delivered 26 EVs in the fourth quarter of 2021. Why? Because of this, because this lithium ternary battery saga. So really, there's no an advantage by the end of this year to using lithium ternary batteries. Lee is saying by the end of this year, well, why would you choose to buy them? Especially when LFP batteries are so much cheaper than ternary batteries. Now, the big concern here is currently many companies around the world, legacy auto companies are in the state of building massive battery factories. GM are doing it, Ford are doing it with their partners, of course. Volkswagen are doing it. Even Toyota is getting in on the act. What's going to happen once those battery factories are up and running, producing battery cells which have no advantage but only a disadvantage and cost more to manufacture than lithium ion phosphate cells? Well, I'm fascinated to see what will happen. And I want to know from you, what do you think will happen? Will those potentially even be stranded assets within the next few years? By the time they come online with production, they could even be stranded assets then. That's scary to think about. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.